Hey all, today I wanted to run through uh, my recent deck on how to create premium content for, uh, with AI rather. It feels like a little bit of oxymoron in some ways it is. The good news is you still can create premium content assisted with AI. It's less our recommendation to use it to create it from scratch. And I'll, and I'll get into more detail uh, there overall. But as we jump into this and kind of I share recommendations. I think context is helpful. If you're on our channel, probably makes sense. But if you found this through a third party, Siege Media is 10 plus years old. And most of our clients are mid-market to enterprise national, fintech, SaaS, and e-commerce primarily. And as part of that, some of what I say and recommend might not be as true for someone on the local side. It's a worthy uh, difference to discuss. We have a lot of enterprise brands and in general, we think about risk as it comes to them and we're not gonna deploy some low quality content on the site, even it might be performative due to the potential risk uh, in doing so from a traffic and, and brand perception point of view. So your mileage may vary, but th that's, that's the context of this overall presentation. So starting with the overall philosophy of uh, content marketing generally it, that your goal with SEO is not simply to publish content. If so, creating content with AI would be an optimal thing. That said, our goal is not to do that. It's actually to win when we publish. It's not simply to put something out. That's why AI doesn't really apply here. You need the best content, not the same content that already exists out there on the web. The problem with what you can get from AI content is at the end of the day, it's at best a commodity you can get the same thing that everyone else can get, assuming very similar prompts. To be the best, very clearly, we can't achieve that goal with a commodity. So this being said, in any competitive vertical, at best you're gonna get that same thing than everybody else if you think of it as an output engine without providing anything of significance in terms of inputs. And that's a, that's a very clear difference that I'm gonna get, to, get into in future slides. Essentially what you need is the absolute best thing that exists. You need world-class non-commoditized elements in order to rank and be the best thing that exists for that topic that, that you wanna build out. So how can we reliably get there in terms of our topic sets and, and, and our philosophy from a content standpoint? First is just ask and give, rather, not, rather than, excuse me, don't ask, give ChatGPT unique outputs you believe are best in class. Essentially unique things that are proprietary, researched, uh, unique, that will then get you to a best in class thing. So say, for example, we were a national real estate brand and we had a lot of unique first party data that we could curate and then feed in a table to ChatGPT. It now functions as your data analyst for that information. So if I asked it to summarize that information into some ideas for marketable data studies or concepts, I very easily could do that with that information and first party proprietary thing that I've been just handed it. Similarly, within an e-commerce experience, product page level, category page level, the UX design and the product photos themselves are the non-commoditized piece of that equation. If we look at this brand, Monk and Anna, who has a nice looking shoulder bag, we could then make the inference and the request to have it create a first draft of the copy that describes that image now, especially that it can describe and see that image in detail. We could get even better if we fed it custom unique images relative to that concept to, to make it even more accurate, but all things considered, it's not a bad place to use AI because it's a non-commoditized piece of that overall equation that uh, is, is contributing to ranking. What you put there in copy matters, but it's the 5% rather than the 95% part of the equation. Another variable that we've seen a lot of success with is copy. So the idea here is that the great world-class thing that you're feeding it is hopefully the content you're creating. What you fed it here is that content, and now you're asking it to go do something with that, with that overall theme of GPT, go do something with my best in class thing that is the core element of that asset. Here, it would be the editing, line editing, grammar, Still suggest a human oversight, but a good first draft to catch the kind of most important common things across your website. So theoretically, what we wanna do instead to get to this best in class outcome is to use it as an output engine using best in class information you feed it 
rather than simply asking it to do something from the start and expecting to rank. Use it as an editor and a summarizer rather than creating from scratch. That's how you're gonna win more consistently. A few options to do that. ChatGPT for Sheets and Docs were a first attempt at this. Great way to just quickly edit it content within Google Docs. It has some function problems. So we've actually moved on to Grammarly. It's a paid option, but definitely a great solution for anyone who's taking content seriously. Why this is the next level up is essentially you can feed it style guides relative to your website or clients. So if we're AP style, we hate using the word link juice or anything like that. It can immediately apply that to a Chrome extension that then oversees your content. And as you're editing that content, will flag that within, within Chrome, within your Google Docs to be able to make you more productive from an editing standpoint specific to your specific website band voice and tone. So very important, very critical, and a great way to think about how to use AI in a productive fashion. So use that content using the inputs that SEO is providing you, uh, it, 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 or rather they're the best in class outputs that you have. Use it as a supporting function rather than a uh, primary function in order to see the success you want. Some other examples of places where the content itself is a little commoditized are here. So essentially category pages, product pages, uh, return policies, social media copy, visual content. As we see an example on the left, uh, an Instagram photo carries 95% of that weight. Again, the copy is the commodity. You could give it previous examples from your Instagram account, tell it to write in that voice, and then use the core visual element, the image itself, as the reason you're gonna drive engagement on that piece of content. Same thing could be true across the web. And the final point is a variant of that is visual content journaling. Of the one area worth thinking about using AI for actual text generation would be visual roundups. So in an example where it's an ideas type post, phrase match, essentially what you're gonna get out of that is a long tail, you're gonna get, you're gonna provide it best in class images. The core areas that are important are the intro paragraph, the outro paragraph, and the core chunky middle, all the value is coming from the images themselves. Hopefully those are first party images from your, your existing library. And you can see in these cases, the rounding out two or three senses of copy are just simply filling out the content. In this case, you could have it describe the images and you can see here, it's actually doing a pretty good job of describing that content. It doesn't misstate it, it's not inaccurate, it's well written, and it describes it in a way that we'd reasonably feel comfortable if we were tracks included in that area. Another uh, example, you could do the same with a deck. Here, they use the word octagonal, not previously in my vocabulary, but a pretty good example of how copy could be used and generated describing that best in class visual element that is, in their case, the unique photos of decks that nobody else has. This, we can make reasonable argument, is a good use for content creation in the overall scheme of things. So that's just a few examples of where text content, or really any content, doesn't have to be text only, is a commodity. We have to bring our best in class to those most important critical areas, and then think about the AI to round those out. So again, we see the monkey and Anna example the many photos in the UX design and the brand voice that communicates from that UX design is why people are gonna buy that product. But the copy itself, still important. They do have a unique tone and voice, more, more clear than other brands even do. But AI does a pretty good job of summarizing and, and equating a very similar version uh, from what we've seen so far, and it's only expected to improve. So if you stick to this idea that essentially you need to use best-in-class outputs and in order to get productive SEO outputs, rather than just asking for an output, create 40 blog posts on all these things, that's how you're gonna create content that wins in, in search. You're not gonna build the same, because if you build the same, you might capture a keyword gap in the market that no one else has captured, but that's a temporary state. Eventually, everyone's gonna capture that via keywords, tools, and the best option is gonna win. So you might be able to uh, land grab short-term, but this is gonna be the right way to long-term build rankings uh, from everything we've seen. So there's a few other creative ways to use AI as well, beyond just what we described up front from a philosophical point of view. Here are some we're thinking of. One, uh, MyAskAI slash custom GPT. The new bots that are, that are out 
are great resources for accelerating the learning and development of your team. So what we did is we inputted all of our process docs into this tool. It's a Slack extension where the team can then ask questions of the bot, not feel nervous about asking a stupid question. And now everyone is learning content marketing really quickly in an accelerated fashion. Custom GPT allows this same process to exist. And now we can essentially use that API in more creative fashions, get off Slack, and essentially replicate the same idea as my, my Ask AI via the API pertinent to us and our brand in a lot of different ways. Generative fill is something that our design team is using a lot. Getting that perfect hero image is often a challenge and can spend a lot of time trying to curate an image that best describes your content. This allows us to take images that exist and match it to the exact needs of the websites we have. As you can see here with the right aligned phone booth, we can then use generative fill to very easily build out that right section to uh, fill it out and, and allow us to scale content in a productive way. Other things we're doing is thinking about the commoditized part of a design image. Here, we're simply looking for a blank piece of paper. That's a reasonable use of AI rather than uh, the full flowery background here. That would be a little more difficult to generate in inequality for sure. So we use it to generate a background. We often will put a printable or a nice looking custom branded element here for our clients. That would be kind of the common application that we would use this kind of thing as a shortcut for. Other things we're thinking about and using or excited about are post outline first drafts. So you definitely want to analyze a SERP, understand what's needed there to feed up-to-date information to JetGPT, but you could then give it relevant knowledge or information about the topic, your website, your client, in addition to SEO that not, might not be in its corpus. So in our example, and what we're excited about is we can feed it our best practice learning and development materials. And then it can use that to build a productive first draft in this case, that otherwise it would have just given us a first draft based on some general prompts. So we can then go from there and build out more detail on create this outline with these kind of options and a meta description and make sure you have these sections that we know are critical based on what the search result is showing us. It can then give us a productive first draft for that. Of course, you still need a human review. You need to improve, you need to iterate, but it's a great place to brainstorm that overall concept. Other things, if you're doing digital PR and you're, you're pitching that content, uh, maybe you want some more marketable ideas. We're going to do a survey on this concept. We're going to do it with around a thousand people. Give us some interesting ideas uh, that we might want to consider for this concept. Super great way to brainstorm, ideate, and, and do all those positive things, which really indirectly do support that premium content. Other things you could do is then have it apply best practices that you have. So we have a unique process for digital PR. We think about organic link generation. We have certain kind of assets we tend to describe or to build and create. We could then ask it to read our article on what digital PR is and then create linkable asset ideas around that topic with that in mind. That's probably going to be more productive than simply asking it to generate some linkable asset ideas. Similarly, we could ask it to create specific content formats for a vertical that maybe are more marketable. So we know things like visual content, quizzes, interactives, calculators tend to be more productive on average. Therefore, we could ask it for, for specific ideas in that realm. For example, uh, auto or car insurance. So that could be a question we ask and we'll get back a lot of different unique ideas such as a gas mileage calculator, car depreciation and estimator, the interactive car configurator are pr all pretty good ideas for a potential linkable asset within the car insurance vertical. Other things you can do are, are just brainstorming visuals for that content. We believe in uh, value additive design. So we could ask it specifically, what are unique design assets that might support this post in a way we might not have thought about? So if we can apply our great design team to that concept, we make it more effective overall and hopefully the whole thing performs better uh, end to end. Another thing we're excited about is instant categorization as a first draft for our keyword stages. If you listen to this channel, you might've just seen our video on KOB research. Since we published that, we've already found ways to improve our KOB process with the new custom chat GPT bot and enhanced API. Essentially, you can feed it information about your, uh, your company, and then it will categorize accordingly based on that. This is a very simple version we're showing for this GIF, but you can see how we're you. We're doing a good job of getting the funnel stage, category, relevancy score to our business to better then apply the KOB sheet. There's definitely a human review needed. You might disagree about what it comes to final conclusions are, 
but overall pretty accurate. You can see in our case, Gmail plugins aren't that relevant to us as an SEO firm. So it'd be lower on the relevancy score. So overall pretty accurate, as you can see. So if this feels a little intimidating, you're like, how do I do this? Ross, that's cool, but how am I gonna do that? The answer is ask AI. So Drew Page, great uh, uh, business development lead on, on our team, also uh, specializes in automation, is humble enough to know when he could just better and more quickly just ask the tool in front of him, how do I use this API? How can I plug it into Google Chrome? A very uh, intro level of development expertise should allow you to create versions of this for yourself simply by asking that tool. So don't be intimidated. There's no better place than to ask the source and, and similarly not uh, feel bad for asking what might otherwise feel like a stupid question. Another kind of macro thing for bigger organizations we recommend and definitely shout out Melissa Holmes, uh, our COO on the team who kind of put the brains behind this idea is essentially to create an R&D department. So we have a whole department that meets uh, monthly and essentially we'll go through things like SEO best practices or SEO content design, digital PR, et cetera, where there's one lead within each of those departments that own the task of innovating and bringing processes to us across the team. So we reward them and build systems for doing so and also create ownership around moving this forward. Within bigger companies, it's just a lot to just be like, everyone go figure out AI. Like everything, you need to delegate and find ownership and what we did is we looked out for the people that clearly had some passion of moving this forward. There's definitely some nervousness around what AI means, but we can all be more productive if we kind of embrace it and do so. So um, team leads, David Tim, Clint Hess, uh, Sam Brown, and Andrew Craig uh, were all great uh, contributors to this in addition to Drew Page that I showed previously and, and also several other members of our team as well. So it's not just these folks, but many great people at Siege are contributing to us continuing to push this forward. And it's not a, like, we're not sprinting. It's a jog. And I think if we jog and think about it thoughtfully, we can bring this in the most productive ways to our team without any risk or overextending the wrong direction to, to bring down quality for you. So hopefully this was useful. Uh, yeah, I'd love any questions in the comments or other ways that you're thinking about using AI. Mm -hmm.